we can find all the roots of this cubic. Now, whenever you're approaching a polynomial like this, you always want to ask yourself first, self, can I just factor this? And gee, it looks a little complicated. First of all, it's a cubic. There's no GCF. Factoring by grouping doesn't look possible. And you can always dive in and just, you know, set up some sets of parentheses, two sets of parentheses, and see if something works. But I don't think we're going to be successful with this. So it's always nice to have something in your back pocket, some tool that you can use. And what I'm going to do here is to try to do some educated guessing and checking to find a root and then use polynomial long division to factor it that way. Now, this only works if this polynomial has at least one real rational root. By rational, I mean it's a number that can be expressed as a fraction. So like a whole number is rational because you can express it as itself over one. Any fraction, obviously. Any decimal that can be expressed as a fraction is rational, right? Like 0.5 is one half or 0.3 repeating is one third. And to the way that we've been finding potential rational roots or possible roots, and we've discussed this before, is to take all the factors of the last term, so in this case it's plus or minus one, and divide it by all the factors of the first term. All the factors of two would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, right? And if you think about how we factor things and then find the roots, I, I think this makes sense. All right, so one divided by one gives me one. So I could either have plus or minus one as a possible root or one divided by two or plus or minus one half. All right, we've been practicing this for a while. Basically, to see if any of these work as a root, you can substitute in, for example, substitute in one. And if you get a zero for your y, then you know it's a root. I think we can see very quickly one doesn't work. Two times one cubed plus five times one. It's a seven minus one. That doesn't give me a zero. Negative one, mm, that's not going to work either. Let's try one half. And again, I'm looking to see if that gives me a zero, because if I get a zero for a y, that is going to be a root. That two in there, so that's going to be two over eight. All right, five times one half times one half, one half times one half is one fourth times five. Well, that's five fourths minus one, and I want to see if that equals zero. Two eighths, heck, that's just one fourth. So one fourth plus five fourths, that's six fourths. That's one and a half. Shucks, that's not going to work. Oh. Well, let's try x equals negative one half. If this doesn't work, then that means I'm out of luck. That means this does not have any rational roots. So the strategy I'm using would not work. So let's hope negative one half works. And it works. And there's much rejoicing. So I have found a root. Okay, in other words, I know that this polynomial crosses the x-axis at negative one-half. Now, perhaps we should have talked about this at the get-go. How many roots will this have? That's right. You look at the biggest degree. Fundamental theorem of algebra tells me that a degree three polynomial will have exactly three roots. Now, they don't all have to be different from each other. They don't all have to be real, but you are going to have three roots. I have found one real rational root. Let's find the other two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a factor. Well, if negative one half is a root, then that came from a factor of x plus one half, right? If I plug in a negative one half, negative one half plus one half, that would give me my zero. So that's came from the factor. And I'm going to do good old-fashioned polynomial long division. 
Now I'm going to stop here and do something here. You don't have to do this, but if you notice, I'm going down in degree. Three, two, there's no X term. So sometimes it's handy to put in a place saver when you're doing polynomial long division, okay? All right, let's dive in and do our polynomial long division. I'm gonna take that first term, x times what is 2x cubed and it's 2x squared. 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. 2x squared times 1 half is x squared. And we always need to remember we're subtracting. This first term by design always becomes zero, 5x squared minus x squared, 4x squared. And you bring down the next term. And again, that's my zero x. That's a little plenty, but I think we will find it useful in a moment. X times what is 4x squared? Well, 4x. So 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times 1 half is plus 2x. And we subtract. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. 0x zero minus 2x is negative 2x. Do you see how handy that was to have that place holder there? And now I bring down the next term. And I do the process again. x times what is negative 2x? It would be a minus 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 1 half is minus 1. This is going to work out beautifully. Negative 1 minus a negative 1. That's negative 1 plus 1 and 0. And of course, if you don't get a zero here, then you did something wrong. Because if x plus one half is indeed a factor of this, as we think it is, then it will divide nicely into this polynomial with a remainder of zero. All right, my friends, I have just factored my original function. So now I can rewrite that original function in its factors, which are x plus one half and 2x squared plus 4x minus 2. And now I'm looking for the roots. So uh, it looks like I can factor out a GCF. So let's go ahead and factor out a GCF of 2. I'm just going to leave it right there. OK, that 2 is looks a little funny there. I'm just going to put it out front just because it looks nice. So it looks more like a coefficient. You know, and I, I could even divide both sides by two, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so now let's see what roots I have. Well, that two is just something that's stretching this polynomial. That doesn't lead to a root. This is the root I already know about. So now I just need to solve this quadratic. I need to find the two roots of this quadratic. Well, let's see, is that factorable? Gosh, it looks like it should be, but it's not. You can go ahead and try it. But you know, not all quadratics have nice rational roots. If it's not factorable, that means the roots are either going to be real, but irrational, like with a square root, or maybe the roots are imaginary. We could do the quadratic formula. Let's do it. So A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 1. Here we go. A 5, 6, here we go x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Boom. You have to sing when you do that, otherwise it doesn't work as well. 4 minus a negative, so that's going to be 4 plus 4, otherwise known as 8. And there are my two additional roots. So I have x equals negative 1 half, and then I have x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 8 all divided by 2 and negative 2. Oh, I already said it. Plus or minus are your two roots. But some of you are probably saying, hey, I could simplify that. And you're right, I could. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So let's see. 8 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And square root of 4 is 2. Wow, I can really simplify. So now, since when you're dividing something with addition or subtraction, of course, you have to divide each term. So that's negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1, plus or minus 2 root 2 divided by 2, which is the square root of 2. And there we have our three 
roots. I have negative one half. I have negative one plus the square root of two. And I have negative one minus the square root of two. And I have successfully found my three roots. Hey, just for fun, let me just show you how you could have used completing the square to solve this, because it's actually easier than quadratic formula. So here is an alternate method that would help you solve that quadratic, completing the square. And it's super duper fast for this particular one. If you recall, completing the square means I want to turn this into a nice, perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to temporarily, well, or whatever, I'm going to add that one out of, so it's out of the way. I'm going to take half of this middle term, half of two is one, and I'm going to square one. One squared is one. Now, of course, I can't just add one to one side of an equation to keep things balanced. I have to add one to the other side. That is now a perfect square trinomial that can be factored as x plus 1 times x plus 1, correct? 1 plus 1 is 2. Hey, x plus 1 times x plus 1 can be rewritten as x plus 1 squared. Oh my goodness, now to solve for x, I can peel away that square root. The square root of x plus 1 squared is plus or minus x plus 1. Square root of 2 is just square root of 2. And I'm going to just put the x plus 1 over on the other side, which is what we typically do, and then subtract 1. So that's another way you could have found those two additional roots. Okay, so our last thing to do is just to make a very quick sketch of this cubic. So we know it's a degree 3 with a positive leading coefficient, so I know what my end behavior is going to look like. Uh, let's just very quickly plunk down where these x-intercepts are going to happen. Of course, these are all real roots, so they're actually going to be x-intercepts. Negative one-half, boom. Let's see, square root of two is around 1.4. So negative one plus 1.4-ish is going to be, you know, around 0.4. Negative one minus 1.4 would be like negative 2.4 something like that. So my cubic with my end behavior will look something like that. There's a reasonably good sketch of my cubic. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I think it was fun.